In this first video, let's take a look at the MyPBX, its accessories, and the contents of its box. Upon receiving the product and opening up the packaging, you will notice that the MyPBX standard is neatly packaged with EPE foam. Setting the product aside, you will see that underneath there is a small box containing the remaining items, which includes the user manual and the warranty card, the power cord and the AC adapter, and lastly, the network cable and phone line. In a follow-up video, we will show you how to connect everything and install your MyPBX. Once you have removed all the items from the packaging, you will begin to connect your MyPBX unit. First, please connect the network cable to the LAN port of the MyPBX. The other end of the cable will plug into your router in any one of the ports located at the rear. In this next step, we will connect the AC adapter to the MyPBX's power cord. Once we plug in the power cord to the back of the MyPBX unit, the unit will turn on. You can verify this by having the LED lights shining in the front. When the indicator LEDs start blinking, the boot process will be complete. After booting up the MyPBX unit, you will notice that the LED lights on the front indicate the connection status of the corresponding ports on the back of the unit. Once we verify that the lights are blinking appropriately, we will connect the PSTN line to the FXO port, and we will now connect the analog phone line to the FXS port. Once we have made the appropriate connections to the back of the Yaystar MyPBX device, it is time to change the IP address of the PC to make it work on the same network as the MyPBX. The default IP address of the MyPBX server is 192.168.5.150. So generate your IP address accordingly, hit OK, and we're ready to begin. In order to make the initial configuration, please make sure that the IP address of the PC that you're using is changed so that it, it can work within the same network segment as the MyPBX's default IP address within the local area connection. The default IP address of the MyPBX is 192.168.5.150. Typing it into your browser's address bar will lead you to the user login page where the default username is admin and the default password is password. You can then select your language of choice from the drop-down menu and then you're ready to log in. Looking towards the left tabs, you will notice that there is one labeled LAN settings. This is where you can change your MyPBX's gateway and primary DNS addresses according to your local network environment. Once you have made those changes, you can then click Save on the bottom of the screen. Once you click Save, you also want to apply the changes. The button is located on the top right of the screen. Once that is complete, you may now reboot the system for all the changes to take effect. After we have changed the Yaystar's default IP address, we can now revert our PC to its original settings by clicking on Network Properties, opening up IPv4, and obtaining the IP address and DNS automatically. Hit OK and we're ready to begin. Once we have made the appropriate changes to the Yaystar MyPBX's default IP address, it is now time to log back into the GUI 
using the IP address that we had set. We simply type it on any browser's address bar, we preferably like to use Internet Explorer, and we're ready to log in. We're using the same credentials as we did before, admin as being the username and password being the password. Once logged in, we're ready to begin configuration. In this video, we will be talking about how to add VoIP extensions to your MyPBX. Firstly, we want to hit options on the left hand side under internal settings. Then we're going to set the user extension range that we're going to be using, which in this case would be 8000 to 8200. Once we've done that, we can click save on the bottom and then apply changes on the upper right hand side. Next, we're going to click on extensions. And on this pane that's coming up, we can edit, modify, delete uh, any extensions that we have added to our PBX. This is what the submenu would look like. And we can delete them as well. Now one of the neat things about this menu is that you can bulk edit and bulk delete as well. All we have to do is just select multiple extensions on the left hand checkbox. And here we can edit them individually or together. Now doing the same thing, clicking multiple boxes, we can also delete them as well. Now what we're going to do now is add extensions in bulk. So we're going to delete all that we have currently right now and we're going to start fresh. So first when we add extensions in bulk, we want to make sure again that we add the quantity, the type of extension and which extension numbers or range that we want to use. add bulk extensions we select here the quantity and select the type here and where we're starting the extensions from once we've done that we can create the extensions and hit apply changes on the upper right hand side again. Another way of configuring extensions to your MyPBX is through auto provisioning. To do this we hit the phone provisions tab on the left hand side and we're going to click on refresh. This will initiate a system detect of any Yealink, SNOM, Cisco's, Astra and Polycom phones within your local area network. Now the displayed IP phones are able to be configured via the MyPBX web interface directly. You can either do them in bulk or do it individually. By doing it in bulk, you can select to configure the selected phones. And once that is done, you can either close out or hit save. For the purposes of this manual, we will configure them individually. We want to just click on the MAC addresses, select the phone type, and the lines and extensions that it would be using. Once we click Save, we hit OK, and now that phone appears on the Configured Phone tab. Doing the same thing with the other one, this one is a T20. And configure the line 1 as being extension 8000. Once we have set that, we click Save, hit OK, and you will see now both phones under the Configured Phone tab. We apply the changes, 
And to verify, we're going to go on to the line status on the left hand side. And now you will see that those extensions have now been properly registered. Now that we have configured the extensions properly, you can try to make an internal call from VoIP extension 8000 to 8007. Extension 8007 is ringing and shows the caller ID as 8000. This confirms that your setup is correct. To configure FXS extensions to your MyPBX, you must have the S2 module installed. We want to go to the Extensions tab on the left hand side, and here you will see all your FXS or FXO extensions available. We hit Edit, and here we can change all the different variables. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will delete this entry and begin another one. Once we hit delete though, you will notice that the port is still available. We're going to click on edit and we will edit this extension to be 8200. So we're going to type 8200 in all these fields. But you can change it to something more familiar if you'd like. Once we have added all of these parameters, we're going to click Save and then once again apply changes on the upper right hand side. Now that we have made the FXS connection and hooked up our analog phone to it and configured it via the MyPBX interface, we are now ready to test. By simply dialing 8007, we can confirm that our FXS extension and analog phone is connected and configured properly for VoIP use. In these next videos, we'll learn how to set up outbound routes, taking a PSTN trunk line as an example. By clicking on the Outbound Route sub-tab and hitting Edit, we can now set up our outbound route. The default name is PSTN Out, and you will see the dial pattern as being the digit 9, meaning that when you press 9, you will be directed to an outside line. By stripping one digit, we now remove the number 9 from the numbers that you want to dial. Here you can enable available extensions to use this outbound route and you can move them from one side to the next and edit them as you please. And we'll select the extension such as 8007 or all of them and then click save once we're done. Now that we have set up our outbound route, we are ready to test. You can test this by making an outbound call to a cell phone via this new outbound route. By dialing 9 as a prefix to the number, you will see that it's now able to route it through the PSTN line, to the cell towers, and to your cell phone. This confirms that your PSTN outbound route has been configured successfully. In this video, we will do inbound routing. By clicking on the inbound route sub-tab, we may edit this and you can change the configuration on this window. Please note that only the trunks in the selected box are able to be used as the inbound routes. Here you have to select different destinations for the incoming calls depending upon the different days and time. For example, Select IVR as the destination for both office hours and non-office hours. And then, all the incoming calls of the selected trunk will be routed to the IVR directly during the business days. Click Save. And then lastly, Apply Changes. Now that we have set up the inbound routes, it is time to test our configurations. Using a cell phone, we're calling the trunk number to the MyPBX and then we'll be dialing extension 8007 following the prompt. Once we have connection to the phone, we have verified the functionality and the ability of the MyPBX.
thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.